this is the Town of Darien Sewer Commission regular meeting, Tuesday, August 6th at 4.30 p.m. in room 206 of Town Hall. Going to call the meeting to order at a hair after 4.30. Um, I am going to do the minutes first. Uh, so uh, item two on the agenda is approval of last meeting's minutes. Yeah, I actually had a question on the superintendent's report on seven. On or where is that? Where is that? Section C. I, I, I mean, I kind of got lost. It was a sentence. It was about it was a bit of a run on sentence and I kind of because it goes long, that is a long sentence. It was, Reported that all the underground work had been completed, comma, that the utility box had been installed at Heather Lane location, comma, that the utility box had not been installed at Lake Drive, comma, that once the Lake Drive utility box and meter had been installed, staff will request the electrical service, which is estimated to take two weeks per ever source. And then, then I didn't understand that we have. I understood. Issues. I understood everything so far. But then it goes. Grammar that side. we had mission SCADA appliance once all is ready we will contact NAP to install you you have the the, the mission SCADA yes the actual okay yes that we have it and have once it. all is ready we will yeah. contact yeah. yeah I understood it sounds like there should have been yeah. followed by a bunch of semi <laughs> yeah, yeah just I, that's one way to solve the problem <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Any other questions on the minutes? Anybody no, I read anything? the that that was just a. So I was trying to read it. Good to you. I just didn't know what mission SCADA meant, but I can ask later. <laughs> uh, anyone remember the acronym for SCADA? Uh, it's System Control and Data Acquisition. <sighs> okay. So it, it's how we communicate. Oh, supervisory control. Okay. It's how we communicate uh, with our pumps in the cloud. Basically, we can uh, okay. remo remo remotely. It's okay. a wireless network. Yep. Thank you. But the other thing it, it does is it, it charts the data, so you could kind of like, you could pull up a flow chart and see mm -hmm. how you know yeah, how frequently, every day how frequently is, yeah. and then you could put the rain chart next to it, and you can kind of see our okay. yeah. I and I situation. Yes, yes. get into that. Uh, any other? Uh, so do I have a motion on the minutes? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes um, as, as amended. Read. Okay. Uh, do I have a second? I'll second. Any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, do I have a vote? All those in favor? Aye. All right, we're moving on. That's 4 0. Uh, item number three sewer connection pro rata share, Robert A. Crane, 301 Mansfield Avenue. Discussion and action. Uh, who is going to do the introduction on this one? I guess Mr. Crane is here. Um, yep. If I can give a, a preamble. Please do. Sure. Okay. Um, Pam and David Mixer developed uh, a sewer on Mansfield Avenue between Peach Hill and Oxford School in order to put his sewer in. And in between those two locations, anybody who connected would owe Mr. Mixer uh, pro rata share or um, some sort of an assessment in accordance with whatever development agreement there was. So far, so good. That has been the case. Um, Everybody that connected has paid us, and then we sent a check to Mr. Mixer. Um, that's this is where it goes downhill a little bit. I haven't been able to find the file. I can tell you by memory that um, my previous boss um, wrote Mr. Mixer a letter and told him that the project was paid off, that um, he had received at least 100% of the money that was due to him. Um, now, in regards to this particular case, uh, it's my understanding that we TV'd the line internally to try and find a lateral connection. We did not, um, which means that uh, the sewer is available for 301, and they're gonna have to go out to Mansfield Avenue and cut the road to get to the sewer and saddle it up to make the lateral connection. And I believe what Mr. Crane will tell you is that he should not have to pay the pro rata share. And I will tell you that the commission has not always been consistent. Um, sometimes they have um, and made people pay to connect. 
why should somebody get something for free that everybody else paid for just because they came lately? And other times, why should the uh, Sewer Commission make money off of this? Other municipalities have connection fees. We do not. I believe those are the issues before you. So uh, let, me, let me just ask a couple yep. questions before you get up. Thank you very much. Um, uh, so we do not have a copy of the original developer's agreement. But your, and I'm sorry if I'm repetitive, your uh, recollection is that at one point the uh, sewer superintendent's opinion was that our, our uh, obligations to the developer were over. That is correct. Okay. And um, that came about in a letter from the director of public works to a local attorney, Wilder Gleason, who was representing David Mixter at the time. Do, and do we have a copy of that letter? I do not have a copy of that letter. Okay. I regret not having it. <laughs> Can we ask, Me too. Can uh, we ask uh, Gleason for one? He, Maybe. Yeah, he might have one. I would spouse. imagine that Gleason would have every right or duty to not, not disclose anything without his client's approval. Um, well, you're the lawyer, though. Well, I mean, you could ask him. I mean, you know, I could ask him. I mean, Gleason could ask his client. Yes, he could. Okay. The worst you could say is no. Can you, can you give me a bit? I have the logistics. Three oh eight. You're talking about a development that, and then you're talking numbers. I don't. I'm not familiar with the addresses on okay. Mansfield. I know that you the ponies are in front of the school, Oxridge. Yes. Okay. Right across the street from there, up on the hill. Okay. There was a development called Mansfield Greens. Okay. Um, I know. I'm familiar with Mansfield Greens. Okay. Okay. There was no way that they could do what they wanted to do and install septic systems. So they approached the sewer commission at the time. Um, and ask them if they could extend the sewer. The, the nearest sewer was at Peach Hill. They extended the sewer all the way from Peach Hill, all the way up to the driveway of Oxridge School. And uh, the sewer commission was very happy at the time because Oxridge School all of a sudden was gonna have access to a sewer, so it worked out well. And the town and of Darien paid a pro rata share when Oxridge tied in? I don't know. Okay. I don't, maybe, maybe there was some deal if you let me do this yeah, yeah, yeah. You pay, you don't have to pay. I don't know about Oxford School, but I know the people in between paid, and uh, this is. And everyone not, paid and is hooked in? All those? Because some of those. Not, not all hooked up. But, uh, not everybody is hooked up. Wait, but everyone paid? Connected. No, 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 no. The people no, that no. chose people to connect paid. paid. Mansfield people. Greens. Okay. Yeah. But well, but, and Greens then others along the line. And then others. But they we don't know. The whole thing. But Mansfield we don't know Greens. who's connected to that line? Excuse me? We must know who connected. We, we do. Oh, okay. Yeah, I would say we do. Okay, then I'm confused. I thought pro rata share is the overall price divided by the possible entries, entrance. Yes. And so yes. unless every entrant paid, it would not be a, how at 100%. We, how did we get to 100%? That's a very yes. good question. Yes, but um, this was kind of weird. The assessments were not all the same. The pro rata shares were not all the same. Mm -hmm. They varied, I'm going by memory, between ten and twelve thousand um, dollars. In addition, there were lots of empty lots, some of which were provided with a T connection in case somebody ever decided to build there. There were also subdivisions later. So those are just a couple of the reasons why the number uh, can change over the time. project could have been paid off and still um, not everybody was connected. How, what, what was the date of the sewer extension approximately? Um, 1986. 1986. Sorry to, to Yeah, Thank you. I happened to be uh, at Stearns and Wheeler at the time and I was the inspector on the job. So okay. it was How old were you then? <laughs> <laughs> but Sometimes, sometimes in my well, 20s. I mean, are we? Um, 33 years ago. Yeah. Have we ever had a situation like this before? Oh, sure. Um, how yeah. does that result? Well, the commission has not been consistent. Um, the debt, the debt of subdivision right on the corner here, um, there, those three houses on the corner connected to the sewer in Renshaw Road, and you now that project was 
way old, and the commission said there's no reason to try and get three thousand dollars out of them. Or, or there was there was another case where uh, Nutmeg Lane. I don't I don't remember the outcome, but there was times when the sewer commission said we should recoup our money, um, and other times where they said that that project is so old and it's been paid for decades ago, there's no reason to. <coughs> May I ask, is it, is it the responsibility of the developer to put in these laterals as they're doing their sewer project in Usually. order to be reimbursed? That is how we do it now. For our pro rata share? But he didn't put one of those in here, correct? That's correct. I mean, as a possible solution, would be it, would it be appropriate to say whatever the cost of the lateral is, he needs to provide a fee if the lateral is more than the fee? Right. Let's put, I yeah, yeah, I, 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 I hear where you're going, that there's a uniqueness to that particular fact. And it sounds like we don't do but the same thing. But before we get into right. solutions, let's hear from the sure. uh, property owner looking to tie into the source. Uh, thank you guys for your time, Darren. Thank you for the overview. Um, I appreciate it. Um, and just your name and address for yeah. the. My name is Rob Crane. I just purchased 301 Mansfield Avenue in Darien. Uh, first time home buyer. Um, I'm a commercial real estate broker by trade. I work for CBRE in Stanford. So I don't do residential, but I did represent myself in this transaction. Reese Hutchinson, who, uh, as you guys know, sits on the committee, was the uh, selling broker on the house. Um, and just to give you guys a little background on this, prior to buying the house, I did an inspection, had somebody in Laurel Hill come in and do an inspection of the existing septic system, which there was some concern uh, about because there's a lot of runoff from um, to the downtown property in the back. And it basically the conclusion was that because of the runoff, at times of the year, the water table was too high for the, um, the leach field to work. So the conclusion was that we had to connect to the sewer to make the house viable. Um, the people that live there um, passed away in the home, so you know, they, at the end of life, they weren't as concerned about that. Uh, both Reese and I, prior to buying the house, separately, but also communicating, invested, investigated the issue of whether it was possible to connect, whether there was a lateral, um, and we spoke with Anthony at the um, sewer department. He said it would be possible to connect. He did not believe that there was a fee to do so, um, and that he thought there might be a lateral. They initially had some CTV or whatever the camera they sent down the sewer is. Um, they, they couldn't tell, uh, and so then at a later date, they ran it again. I can't remember if that was before or after I bought the house, but before I purchased it, our understanding was that there was going to be no cost to connect, um, and then we went forward with it. Um, Ken Epley here is doing a, a renovation. The entire house was original in 1965, so we had to do a little bit of updating to uh, uh, make my fiance happy uh, and myself too, frankly. But then as part of the process, we went and submitted our permit for the, um, the the sewer, and I think the permit, Darren, correct me if I'm if I'm wrong, got most of the way through the process. I think we received a final copy of it before we even heard that there was going to be a fee. Uh, we have Laurel Hill scheduled to come in uh, shortly after, assuming that it was going to go forward. Um, and, and I guess sort of the 10th, 11th hour, we heard that there might be a fee and that the town department was looking for the documentation to determine whether there was or not. Um, as you can hear from Darren, to this stage, there's uh, still no resolution on that. Uh, but you, my hope is that the commission hearing a set of facts, given that the line has theoretically been paid off, again, no documentation again, uh, there would, theoretically should have been a lateral put in, there is no lateral there. Um, that the, and, and that it was communicated prior to the purchase of the house that there was a fee <laughs> that, given that unique set of facts, um, I would hope that the sewer commission could find that um, there'd be no cost to connect. And if there's no agreement, you know, and if it's fully paid off, I don't know who would be getting the money anyway. And the, the town doesn't charge a fee to connect uh, in a normal circumstance. So if this thing is paid off, uh, I don't know if it's normal for a developer to turn a public works thing into a profit center. Um, so I would, I would think that, the, from my perspective, I understand that everybody can have a different view, that um, 
and the easy solution here would be to, to wave the fee. We're going to connect to the sewer, take a potential health hazard out of the ground, and um, you know, I think it would be good for all parties involved once we get there. All right, thank you for your presentation. Yeah, thank you um, for your time. Does everybody have a reasonable understanding of the facts in the case? Do you have any uh, yeah, questions? Yes, but I, I mean, it's, I, I don't know. I, I think we need to do a little more due diligence to well, try and find so, the paperwork. So, so, okay, so you're saying that uh, you're not prepared to uh, make a decision tonight without doing more work to try to find the original paper? Yes. The okay. other thing that might be worth mentioning, and sorry to interrupt, is that uh, the fee to connect and install the lateral, um, we've had several quotes. Uh, the lowest one we got was $47,000 uh, as is without an additional fee on top of it, which was way considerably higher than what I was okay. hoping to pay when I purchased the house. So this is all a, bit, a little bit of sticker shock and um, you know, at the end of the day it will significantly affect our, our finances going forward. Well, is this $47,000 so, going to the road or how far everything. down the that, to do with, That's to do everything. The, the lateral, it, I have to get broken up, I think it was somewhere between seven dollars to $10,000 to install the lateral. In, okay. And then you know, there's, there's a stone wall there that needs to get repaired and a, a whole bunch of other, and it's a state road um, as well. But you have Derek, to understand that all we're doing is, if it's not paid off, we're not charging you. All we're doing is acting as the agent and collecting it because this person, in essence, fronted the money 30 years ago and had to is getting today's dollars for, or you know, is getting the same amount in today's dollars from 30 years ago. So he's getting, if the share is still owed him, he's getting at most 50 cents on the dollar. Let, let me ask you a question. What if we can't find the answer to the question? Yeah, well, given more time, do you anticipate being able to search anywhere you haven't already searched to turn up the documentation? Only rock left, I have time to turn, is Wilder Cleaver. Okay. Um, that is a rock. Wilder was, all, you guys should know, Wilder also represented the seller uh, of the property when I purchased it. So okay. I don't know, I'm not a lawyer, but he's in the loop. Creates additional um, well, this property owner, uh, Mr. Crane, has been waiting a month already uh, for us to come up with uh, a answer or requirement or solution. Uh, if we wait to the next hearing, it's another month to try to collect more information. I'm not saying that that's not the right path, but maybe you could tell us about your schedule and your construction schedule. Uh -huh. Probably turn that over to Ken, but I know that we're. You know, what well, what would be it would another month be an, an onerous delay? It could potentially apply to our occupancy of the property. What's your Ken Beckley from ERI building and design? Um, so we've already um, pulled the permits to try and get all this done, and the biggest hang up was getting all the state permits for the road, and that's all in the process. We should have those any day. So. But in terms of uh, your overall schedule for construction on the home, when do you anticipate uh, having it ready to be occupied? We're probably two months away from that, but this, it's a big project. It's a I long, understand. long run, um, and the tie-ins and stuff. So obviously, you know, time is of the essence. Um, we don't have any specific date because we don't have a permit yet. Um, but we're getting as far along as we can. But we're shut down when we start the sewer line because there's no other way to get into the property and it's such a long run essentially. Is there an issue getting Laurel Hill lined up if we get delayed with the permitting? I mean, may, I, may they not be able to get in there because of the prior commitment? I don't know. I, I mean, I yeah, I, 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 I get it. I mean, yeah. but, but does it sound feasible to have the work done in September? Yes. Do you want to put, do we want to put your backs up against the wall? I mean, yeah. I understand. I'm just trying to get a general mm -hmm. sense of I what's going on. I think the, I have that general The hardest sense. thing is for me, he did his due diligence, yeah. you know, and got an answer that, no, so I, we were look, I, I've heard the arguments. I don't kind of need to okay. hear the arguments again. I get it. I, 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 I find them very compelling, uh, but we just want to make sure that instead of having a situation where we make continually make inconsistent decisions, we try to find a consistent pathway here. Okay. Uh, uh, I just yeah, want to, if, if we, or if the, let's say Darren, if you talk to Gleason, and he says, yeah, it's all paid off. 
I mean, if yeah, you if, can we create a flow Darren diagram for that, our decision? Can we uh, make a resolution if that happens that yeah. we are satisfied, and then Darren will let. Because yeah, I, 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 I like where you're kind of headed. Because in my mind, the danger is uh, we make a decision to say uh, no connection fee is required, right. and then the developer comes along and says, "Oh, I see someone just connected. So where's my, where's my fee? You know, where's my share?" <laughs> and then so I, and, and then we're on the hook I for presume, paying money. <laughs> I and, and I know it's semantics, I but it's a, to me, it's a cost of connection, not a connection fee. Okay, sure. The town would charge a connection fee. No, no, we do not. And I know that. That's what I'm saying. The town would. If we, we don't. It, yeah. This is a cost of connection because this is going to the developer. We're just acting as okay. the middleman. Sounds and good. I would, I would suggest not that to be. I, I get if Gleason, I got your semantics. If Gleason I indicates that nothing is due, in writing, please. Uh, I'd like to understand better what the developer is supposed to be giving these people in return for getting the money back. Are they supposed no, to no, give the, you the, a lateral? The thing, or the, the thing, oh, yeah, I see. That's if they're not, if they haven't given this fellow a lateral, then I don't think they should personally get back the whole amount of the fee. Well, I mean, if it's the, the but, cost of putting not not the whole forty-seven thousand, but that's the cost moot. of putting the lateral. In. But that's yeah. moot. If, uh, but it's a, his it's, attorney writes a letter and says. It's all paid. Sure, I'm giving you. But, but, but let's. Uh, so that's the first. Thing. Darren's recollection was that these I costs see. of connection ranged between ten and twelve thousand uh, dollars. We've heard testimony tonight that perhaps the uh, installation of the lateral that should have been there is seven to ten thousand dollars. Right. So now we're. Right at we're like close to a wash, if you, depending on which numbers you use, <laughs> of uh, the provision for a, an adjacent property owner to tie in not being there. So it is an interesting fact. That, but is there a rule? <laughs> That's still my question. I, well, I, I, I think that, rules. I There's think, no rules in, in developing properties that you're likely to need to provide I think the out. simplest thing well, to do is to find out. It's the proper way to do it. And it should have been right, done. but you were you were talking about how you want to create a situation where we're not looking yes. at each one of these in as individual. Although I think you might have to, but individual circumstances. Yeah, and my question are, is, because each developer forward, are the developers required to provide laterals? Yeah, they are. No, that's the way okay. we do it. Now. It is what we do. <laughs> yeah, and remember, I'm new because I don't know all these rules. But. Yes, sir. I don't know if it helps the commission, um, but there has been a case where someone paid for a town project. Assessment was paid off, and uh, this person, uh, you know, decades later went to connect and found out that there was no lateral in the commission. Uh, decided unanimously to um, reimburse that person for the cost of the lateral from the main to the property line mm. because everybody else had one had the benefit of yeah. only working on their so property. This person shouldn't have to. Of that habit, mm -hmm. yeah, which is an interesting. That's, interesting. Um, That's the other side of the gamut. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have a strong desire to dispense of this well, and, the, the, and, but, and move forward, but, but I, I don't want the developer coming back to us for the money. That's really the issue. Well, I mean, the problem is that you know there were subdivisions and properties added, so. Yeah. There'd probably be no way for the developer to know in advance. That's true. So, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, why should he be profiting because well, all should. of a sudden... And, we're, and, and our standpoint was that he'd gotten all of his money anyway, but we haven't picked up the letter. So, I, I think... Uh, I, I, don't, I don't want to delay it, but I think we need to uh, turn over the last rock, which is to talk to the attorney and... and uh, See if Wilder has uh, uh, copies of the public record. Okay. So will you table this now or make a resolution? Uh, I, I'm compelled with Peter's, Peter's resolution, which is, again, my, my only concern, speaking as 104, is uh, uh, not to put us in a position where we're challenged for the connection. Right. Uh, so I would be comfortable. Uh, 
along the lines of a, a resolution you were suggesting, which is if our obligation to the developer is in fact uh, paid in full, and we have that in writing from either a previous letter or a current communication, then yes, sir. Uh, I, I'll ask it at the end, but I just yeah. have a question. Uh, then we would authorize staff to proceed with the connection permit without a, a reimbursement charge. Uh, my, my question was, that assuming the developer has sold this project long since 1986, does the developer, even though they've sold the project and theoretically the LLC, still profit from something that they turned over? Yeah, well, there, there was a written agreement mm -hmm. that said, yeah. Basically, anybody, you know, any of these addresses yeah. that tie into so the future. The agreement would kick it back to him, not the owner of the, of the project. Now. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. That was, that's, what I was that's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, so. I'll second your motion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there is a motion on the floor. I guess it was uh, uh, yeah. brought, up, brought up by Peter, Peter and yeah. seconded by Susan. Uh, do you, do you understand what the motion was? To I have a resolution of fleets and agrees that mixture has been paid off and no connection fee is due. And we are going to get that in writing. Yes. Now, if he has no idea, then it has to come back to us for a future well, I decision. Mean, he, he was the attorney, so yeah. he probably does. Um, yeah. And, otherwise, and again, otherwise, to me, it's, it's semantics. Otherwise, like, he has to come back. A connection back. fee is something that the, the town char you're charging. You're this is a fee for connection. It's it's it because is, it is all we are is the middleman. But we we all know what we're talking about. Yes, yeah, correct. There is no connection fee here. It's, a, it's like, a, like the, almost like a reimbursement. Except for the whole reimbursement. It's, 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 it's exactly. Yeah. But I'm just. Yeah. I don't maybe just because I know the connection fee is something yeah, yeah, else. Yeah, sure. Yeah. It rubs so, me. Uh, is there any? I mean, if, what happens if we don't get that resolution and come back next meeting? I think we're going to have to come mean, separate. Um, uh, you know, I, I get it, yeah. and we are trying to be helpful. Yeah. No, our, our, our job is kind of protecting the other ratepayers in the town, and there's a little bit here where I don't feel fully protected. I mean, just just as a another thought, not to do with the resolution, but if the developer demanded a connection fee, then he ought to make the connection well, the, up to the value. That's, yeah, that's, that's my point. <laughs> yeah, well, that's so. But let's find out first whether yeah. we don't want to be the middleman. Yeah. <laughs> we are. All right. So we have a motion. We have a second. Uh, any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. All right. That's four zero. Hopefully, we won't see you again. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you Darren. I appreciate it. Uh, all right, so that was item number three. Uh, I am going to use the chairman's prerogative to move the agenda around a little bit to serve folks waiting in the audience. Um, so for now, uh, we're going to skip past four and five, address them later in the agenda, and start right with item number six, sewer user fee appeal, David Johnson, 14 Prospect Avenue. Discussion and action. Okay, have you figured this one out? No, I haven't, but I don't see anybody standing up. Uh, Mr. Johnson, oh, please come there. to the okay. podium and announce yourself. No, I didn't get a chance to. Uh, you don't have this in front of you on the no, bike? No, I don't. Oh, I have it, but I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't have it. <laughs> While you're riding your bike. Well, why don't we do this? Uh, would you uh, <laughs> announce yourself for the record and describe the nature of your appeal? Thank you. My name is David Johnson, 14 Prospect Avenue, Darien, Connecticut. I'm a 30-year resident of Darien. Moved to Darien in 1989. My wife and I, our first home was at uh, 39 Hilton Street. We lived at 39 Hilton Street until 2001, which time we purchased 14 Prospect Avenue, which is, uh, if you're not familiar, it's directly behind number 16. It's a uh, flagpole lot, shared driveway with number 16. Uh, my wife and I, Amy, we have six children, ages 14 to 30. A uh, 30 year old, 29 year old, and the 20, soon to be 26 year old are out of the house. I have a 21 year old son who has been playing ice hockey in Canada for the last two years. He's coming back, get, lived at home this summer. I'll be done with this in one second. No, okay. He'll be at New Haven, Connecticut, uh, at uh, Albertus Magnus College playing ice hockey. 
trying to say your usage is going to go down this, <laughs> next year. Big time. Between that, thank you very much, Commissioner. Between that and the uh, and the uh, line repair, um, I think we're uh, we're in a better position than we've ever been. Um, I worked at McGraw Hill Publishing Company for 20 years in New York City. I was a commuter from both the Roman Heights and Darien. Uh, in 2005, I changed careers. I've been working in Connecticut uh, for both Merrill Lynch and Morgan Stanley. And I bring that up because that's an important part of my appeal, and I'll, I'll end my presentation with a remark uh, along those lines. Um, uh, honestly, uh, I kind of lost track of things in 2017 and 2018. Uh, my wife and I, um, we actually we argued back and forth about what the problem was. We thought it was in our indoor plumbing, and um, you know, we uh, we have multiple. We have three bathrooms in the house, and multiple showers. Which it's a six-bedroom house. So, um, anyways, after you know, working with Aquarion and setting up an installment plan to stay current with them, so we wouldn't lose our water service, uh, we asked Aquarion to come out, and uh, they said, "This is out of control. We've got a line leak." That was uh, in uh, 18, May of 2018. My wife, Amy, um, with some money that she received as a gift from her mother, paid an independent contractor $2,000 to dig up our driveway and replace, and replace or repair the water line. So um, all I have as far as records for that is a copy of her bank statement, which she gave me permission to share with you all today to show the withdrawal. Okay. So that, that was so paid. you can see in the water records uh, page five of twelve here on item number six. Five. All right. Uh, a clear um, drop in water usage from April to June uh, of 2018, with the property owner noting the repair was made in May of 2018. We do like to see usually some documentation from the contractor or professional making the repair that in fact that's what they did. Uh, so it is nice to get that documentation if it's possible. Um, otherwise you can you can continue on and look at the rate of water consumption uh, after the repair that's on page 4 of 12 uh, staying pretty consistently between seven and 1100 cubic feet per month. Uh, so that's a year's worth of data at the same level. That's just pretty compelling to establish domestic water use. <coughs> um, there is a, a layer of, um, as Bob has pointed out in the past, uh, homeowner's responsibility, you know, for you see your Aquarian water bill going up month after month after month. Uh, uh, you know who, who owns the inaction? Not that it was entirely inaction, but uh, uh, took a while to get the, the fix uh, taken care of. Um, that being said, I think we can use the last year's worth of data to establish a good baseline. Yeah. So we, what's that if we use? It page prorates four? out to 101. 101 CCF cubic per year. CCF per year. Which but the question is more when did it start? Um, yeah, is, yeah. How far back yeah, could yeah, you yeah. go? Yeah, or what's reasonable? Let's go back to the seven, you know, the, the 2017 bill. Yeah. And it's, that seems mm -hmm. kind of up in the air. Yeah, yeah. All those 20s. And, but then, it, then it, there's. But it's the year a pretty, before, you're right. You, you look at the 20s. So I'm looking at page seven of 12. I'm looking at page three of 12. It's all it's all charted. It's all written out. Oh, this one. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that one. I like the graphs. I'm a graphy guy. But this has years and years and years. Yeah. Um, well, so there's kind of a plateau in these 20s, even though it's kind of high. It's not like it's really getting worse. And then really starting in September of uh, 2017, 17, I yeah. guess, it really starts getting worse pretty consistently over the next uh, well, six, six or eight months. months or whatever. Yep. So uh, what would the, what, so calculator, 
Yep. Uh, what's our current rate? Or what was five sixty-five. So times one hundred and one is uh, five seventy sixty-five. Tamara already did it for us. Oh, <laughs> thank you for reading. Uh, so, and and if you look at and, and if you also look at twenty fifteen and twenty sixteen, it's not that much of a departure from twenty seventeen in terms of overall cost. It's a couple hundred dollars. But so if we took the twenty eighteen bill. The twenty nine eighty three twenty. Yeah, and reduce that to five seventy sixty five because we've been provided documentation that that water wasn't going into the sewer because it was a leak outside of the home, which is also a factor. Yes, that's why we usually want to see the bill because yeah, just to know yeah what repair was yeah made. what repair was made because it's outside the system then we haven't had to pay for the water because the cost of treating clean water is the same as the cost for treating yes. Uh, Sewer water or after water. Um, I, I um, thank you for that explanation. I'm I'm new to this <laughs> yeah. world. Um, although I've lived in Connecticut since 1983, I grew up in Texas, and uh, we didn't have sewer taxes in Texas. Um, okay. I, and I did not live on a farm or ranch, but I grew up in Texas, so um, you can still hear a little bit of that. Yep, it's there. <laughs> so this is uh, this is a new world to me. Um, you know. I'm not making any yeah. excuses. I'm a homeowner. I'm responsible for my property. I'm responsible for my family and myself. So, so yeah. No, we're just trying to, yeah, to yeah. figure out where it started is yeah. the harder part. I, you know, I'd be. I wish I could help. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, if I could help you yeah. on that, I'd be happy to. Because yeah. I, so I'd like I, to get it clear in my mind. That's I agree. I agree with you, Bob. It's kind of hard to decipher at the beginning. I mean, I, I, I would be willing to consider all of 2018, but going after that, it gets a little fuzzy. Yes. Uh, I, I would. I'd be 100 percent with you on 2018. All right. Would you like to make a motion? Well, to to uh, reduce the 28 2018 sewer bill to 570 dollars and 65 cents. Okay. Do I have a second on that motion? I'll second that. Any further discussion on that motion? Um, yes, sir. I'm sorry, are you done with that motion? We're discussing it, okay. so feel um, free to discuss. It, it's my understanding that uh, the gentleman is looking for a reduction on the 17 and 18 bill? Yeah, we, after our yeah, and we're deliberation. Taking, we're taking it one at a time because the second one well, is. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, that's a little greater. Yes. Uh, so uh, any further discussion on Bob's motion? All those in favor? Okay, so you've got your appeal granted for 2018. Do I have a motion to uh, grant a similar appeal for 2017? That one's. Who was the second one in that motion? Peter. Peter. Yeah. Hmm. I have a motion to deny the appeal for 2017. <laughs> I'm just trying to look to try and. I'm looking to Paul. Because <laughs> to go all the way back to these numbers would mean that we started. You know, and, and, and look, I think it's actually, well. I think we. Uh, I think we have arrived at a fairly equitable. I I would have to solution, agree with that. And it is hard to find the line uh, before 2018 where this link occurred in the data provided. So do I have a motion to either grant or deny the appeal? I, I will make the motion to deny the appeal for 2017. Okay, do I have a second? Uh, second. Uh, any further discussion on the motion? <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. Okay, so the appeal for 2017 is denied. Good. Thank Can you. I make uh, a couple of closing comments? Please do. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for considering, and I appreciate whatever you can, whatever you're willing to do. I'm good to go on that. Okay. Okay. Uh, two other things. Um, um, I'm under some financial stress right now, my personal finances, um, and I would like to uh, uh, put forth some, uh, we could come up with some kind of installment plan to get this. I want to get this paid, and I want to pay it in a, in a timely basis. Uh, so are, they, are these outstanding, uh, or have they, they haven't already been paid? These are outstanding. Both, both 17 yes. and 18. Yes. Okay. I think that, that that's between, I don't know if that's us, is it? Do we have the authority to do that, or is that the tax assessor, or do we have the authority? Or? It's my understanding that the tax collector has already been involved okay. with this issue. Okay. 
and uh, you, this, this commission has always been the, the board that adjudicates whether or not interest is applied or whether or not uh, an adjustment as you just made is applied. Yeah, I don't recall ever considering a, 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 a phased payment. Uh, I don't recall that either. Well, I guess I'm just asking if we have the authorization to consider that. If we have the authority to consider that. The, the I guess we are the uh, yeah. As far as I know, always uh, adjudicates and interprets the code of ordinance. Yeah. Um, what would uh, work for you? What would really work for me? I am a registered representative, uh, which means that I've got a securities license. I'm registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission, and I have to disclose to my employer, Morgan Stanley, anytime I have a lien. So I have disclosed to Morgan Stanley that I have sewer tax liens, and that's on my record. What would really work for me, because I'm not trying to, to come up with a great financial deal. I want to get, I want to pay my taxes. Whatever I, whatever you all feel is fair, you all. <laughs> is my taxes fair and equitable? You know, I, I'll, I'll, we've been here 30 years. I'm not going anywhere. I'm toughing it out on Prospect Avenue. But if there is any way under the sun that I could get a release on those liens and I could report to Morgan Stanley, Morgan Stanley knows that I'm here today, that would be the biggest gift you could give me. Because I'd like to tell them that, you know, I've addressed this. You know, I, it's a lien. You know, I have another, I have some tax liens on the property. Those, I've fully disclosed everything to Morgan Stanley. They're my employer. I'm required to do that. If I don't disclose something and they go, the odds of Morgan Stanley coming over here to Town Hall and Darien, I don't know. Anything can happen. We go through the records. Why didn't David Johnson report that lien? You know, then I've got another problem. So, I told them. So if there's, I don't know if anybody's ever asked you all for that. Yeah, no, it's, well, it's hard to. Uh, that would be, that's, yeah. that would be a big help. Thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah, that seems like a big step uh, for us to, uh, to take uh, without um, having it paid. And I think that would be uh, un unfortunately treating you differently than the other ratepayers and taxpayers in town. Uh, but again, if I'm trying to assess uh, when it is likely uh, that the bills will be paid or what payment schedule would, would work. That's the kind of the first question. Um, I can give you a better answer. I mean, this has been a, <laughs> yeah. I've never done anything like this before. Sure, understood. So it would be when I'm clear on, you know, what the final number is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then, Are you working? then I could respond to your question. Are you well, under think, a payment yeah, plan with the yeah. tax department? Are you under a payment plan with the um, tax assessor, with the tax collective? No, not oh, the okay. town. Okay. No, with the uh, Department of Revenue Services. Oh, okay. Totally different. Totally different. Uh, okay. uh, so, well, we have the, the final number is, uh, I'm not using my calculator for this. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. That sounds too high. What is it? 23047. That's your 17 remaining? Yes. And Plus the 560. Oh, and this five. year is five. It's 570, 65. Oh, this is range. that's what this year is too. Uh, okay, got it. So, so let's say the total again. 230470. 230470 is the total uh, uh, sewer user charge uh, owed after after the adjustment you for the appeal. Probably from the 570 for this year because it hasn't been billed yet. Yeah, got it. When does that bill go out? October 1st. October 1st. Okay. After we set the rate. So it's something like 1700 ish uh, outstanding as we sit here uh, with another 570 coming in October. Um, 
Yeah, no, that's just. So your question is, how soon will you pay the seventeen hundred dollars? Yeah, I guess so. That's that's a good question. Um, I can start making payments in September. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't know what the number, what that number is going to be yet. Um, so, is is the twenty three oh four spot seventy? Is that the seventeen? 17, 18, and the bill yet to be so issued that's for 19. Years. Yeah, so that's and one years. of the third year is, is hasn't happened yet. So, so really, let's 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 pull that off. Let's pull that number off. So I, I would say we don't even deal with that. Okay, thank you. At, at the moment. So what's the seventeen thirty four oh five? Seventeen thirty four oh five. That's the amount. Of. Okay. I, uh, I I I have no idea. Has that, does anyone have any experience uh, with the tax uh, collector and liens and? I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't think you release will take a lean off until, until you're paid. paid. Right? I don't, I don't, I don't know think, do I'm that. sorry, but I just don't believe that yeah. is what happens. You're the yeah. lawyer, but I just don't believe that happens. Yeah. I don't think the, I work for the precedent would, would yeah. go over very well. So that's something we feel like we're uh, okay. unable to do. Um, but then the second, yeah, the second question is that entertaining a payment plan to yep. have the outstanding balance paid. Well, can't people always make payments on the balance that they owe? You can yeah, always yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. Do we charge interest? We do. It's so new. <laughs> do we I, charge interest? <laughs> same, same as the tax collector. We do. Okay. Yeah, the reason I, I asked the question, I'm sorry, I don't want to keep interrupt, but yeah. I'm respectful of your time, too. And yeah. The uh, reason I ask about the installment plan, if, if I went into an installment plan, would that help secure release? Yeah, the it doesn't sound no, like we're willing to. Legally, they can. Okay. I mean, it's a, in fact, I guess you know that uh, where there are tax liens on property, I mean, people actually, uh, towns have, have sold those to other people, to third parties. Or foreclosed. You know, <laughs> that's that's mm -hmm. a bad thing. Yeah. All right. Uh, so we don't think there's an action that we can take okay. to that yeah. request. Uh, we, we do wish you luck and we thank you for your uh, uh, candor, um, and uh, I guess that's it. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Good um, luck with your work. Luck. Yes. It'll work. Your workout will work, you know, probably. Yeah. Um, last, should I just discuss that payment plan with Kathy Larkins? Uh, She's going to get updated bills from us. Okay. And that's probably a good place for to start. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Great. Okay. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay. Maybe, <coughs> maybe the appeal amount could be like a payment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So uh, that dispenses of item number six. We're going to move to item number seven: <coughs> approval to install dormant line to allow for potential sewer lateral connection. Uh, Randy Geraldo, 90 Camp Avenue. Discussion and action. This is another the lateral so underneath his driveway, but not use it. Yeah, it's another, it's another drive, uh, another developer sewer, uh, local developer REM, which was an acronym for Richard E. Miller, who's still a local guy. Um, he installed sewer to serve his house at 107 Camp Avenue. Number 90 is a part of the extension. Uh, and to connect to that, I believe it's $19,000 to change. And uh, I believe the resident um, before you today is uh, uh, um, number 90 is asking to connect, but not be charged for sewer so that uh, they can perform some improvements and have the sewer there in the future if needed. I can clarify that. Okay, um, announce yourself and your address for the Randy record, please. Randy 90 Camp Avenue, so this is on the north side of, uh, of the street. Yes. Uh, okay, halfway down the hill. You came inside? You came inside. Okay. Halfway down, you take a left on the olive tree. So you're past that house. house that needs a new roof, speaking nicely? Uh, yes. And, okay. That ranch? Yes. We're the next door. Okay. Um, My condolences. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so... We bought the house in 2012, um, have every year improved it uh, little by little as we've been able to you know, phase it in. Uh, most notably with uh, an expansion that commenced in 15 and finished in 16. 
Uh, during that, we tapped into the water line. Um, so we're, we're pretty much rounding out to the end of this project. Uh, it's a family of five uh, at the house, and now it's the driveway. So the driveway is trashed. It's one inch of asphalt. It's been, you know, all this construction. It's time to finish the job and do the driveway. We're on septic. Um, been on septic since we bought it. I think it's been maybe expanded in uh, prior ownership in the 90s, uh, renovated, but my understanding is ever since then it's been functioning. We pump it every year, we take care of it, it works well for us, no issues. We knew when we bought the house that there was a sewer line put in for this you know, giant house across the street, probably pre-crisis when things like that penciled. Uh, 20 grand to tap it. We have, that's too big of a number for us to warrant it when we've got a fully functioning septic. But I love the optionality of having it in the street. In discussions with the public works, we understand that there's a lateral there. We have no idea precisely where it is. So what I'd like to ask of the commission today, uh, I first have to describe, and I have a map if you care to see it. I love maps. Want to see it? Okay. Yes. Would you like me to approach yeah, yeah, yeah. the... Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Roll it out. We're casual. Yep. Yeah. So this is a survey of the property before your the property. Stage. Yep. So this is Camp Ave. Yep. This is the house you referenced. Yes. Um, Just a point of reference. Plenty of. It's about a one-acre square lot. A lot of room. We actually bumped out the house like about the this. Mm -hmm. Knocked down this little sunroom and just put some bedrooms and stuff. Um, the septic tank is right here. Basically, all of my collection waste. This is the north. Uh, collects here into the garage and, and flows out into the septic tank and leaching field out here in the north. Topography slopes pretty, you know, pretty yep. gradually right. then severely here. Right to left. We're going down. As we're looking at. Um, here's the sewer line. It terminates here. This is the giant house that paid for this expansion of about $80,000. Every tap's about twenty grand. So it's prohibitively expensive. But the way I've always approached it is it's optionality where if this fails, I'd rather pay 20 grand here than to rebuild 20 grand here because this just makes the property, I think, more valuable and it's just nicer than to have a septic system. Um, so like I said, all the work's done. Now all we want to do is repave this driveway, which is trashed. And what I'd like to do, what I don't want to do is put a new driveway on, have this fail tomorrow, and then rip the whole driveway up. So the driveway ends, you can see the dotted line, and everything here is grass. So what I would okay. propose to do is basically like, while I'm doing the driveway project, run a pipe, cap it here in the corner of my garage, just stub it and cap it, run a pipe out to the grass and cap it, and terminate it. So that at the very least, if this ever fails, all I've got to do is rip up grass to here and then I mess up this amount of driveway and not that amount of driveway. Another alternative would be to, to go from here to here cap, go from here to here cap. And what I'd be willing to do, I mean, I'll do whatever you want, but like we can, it's, I understand that the main risk factor for the town is that I cheat this. and I do you know, connect it when you're not. We, we have had recent yeah. situations where we have discovered connections that were never disclosed. Yeah. Um, so it does happen. Totally. And I'm not saying it's you, it could be the, the subsequent uh, property owner. So we are sensitive to that. Yep. And we're sensitive of being able to know when uh, a connection is, is made in, in the future. Um, so I actually like option A more than option B. So you know, because just doing that option. piece, yeah. because <laughs> you know, that's a right away, we're gonna see something happening there in the future. So, uh, um, um, oh, that's a little bit of a circuitous route for a for a sewer line, right? What like are you going to do ideally? for elevations if you don't know, <laughs> don't know the location of the? Uh, yeah, the so lateral. there's so there's two things. So there's got to be good asphalt. This was wasn't too long ago. Yeah, yeah. and and actually, Darren, there, do, you, do, you, do you know there. if uh, mm -hmm. in the developer no, drawing oh, we got any oh, okay. more precise the talking about the line locations on the lateral and its depth? We do not. We don't. We don't. Okay. So we don't. Why don't we? So the they didn't do the as built survey until all the laterals were buried. Yeah, right. oh, okay. But here's Spratt Rolly, right? Spratt Rolly survey? Uh, this one? No, I did this with advanced surveying. This was done. Well, this is his this property. Is like property. Else, yeah. the, the, yeah. I believe 
believe it was Scrat Rally works for. So, so to answer your question, though, so there's two uh, standards. If I go deep enough, three feet deep, you have to cover it. You can cover it in topsoil. Mm -hmm. But if you go 18 inches minimum and you encase it in four inches of concrete, you can, you can start higher. So what I would do is, and it's cost me like five, 600 bucks extra, I'd go the concrete route to ensure I've got the best safe height. Safe so, that, so that I've got like very, very little risk that I'm too low here, if I ever have no, to do No, it's definitely worth it. I, right. I, it's I only that you I mean, so, I could just basically um, risk it and, and blow this whole thing up, but I just, this could fail next year or yes. in 15 years. I have no idea. Uh, are you familiar with what he just described to us? I'm familiar with the project, the REM um, extension. Oh, sure. But in terms of what he is proposing to do now, are you familiar with that? No. Because I'm, I'm familiar that I'm aware that he wants to connect yeah. to the sewer. Well, no, 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 no. He wants to leave a dead yeah. pipe. Yeah. Oh, okay. So he he wants to install uh, a capped pipe here to there, plus okay. or mi plus or minus yeah. under the driveway that he's going to refinish, so that if this fails in the near term, he doesn't have to dig up his driveway to get to the lateral. Anymore. Okay, and where would it stop? Someplace down here? It would stop somewhere. Yeah, it's just over here. here. It's, it's just a straight gap. pipe. So you're not going, you're not going to connect to I it when you're not going anywhere. I wouldn't go anywhere near. I'm about 80 okay. feet away. I mean, what I would love, and I understand your, your hesitation, because it would completely eliminate any ruining later, is if I could do 10 feet to there, too. So then, then would, it's just dirt. I would almost rather see like this come out and stop you know, 10 feet shy of the property boundary, and then the, that being the only gap that you have in the right. future. Right. I think for that, I would probably, def yeah. I would lower my upfront costs and yeah. stop here, yeah. because yeah. a 45 here and a 45 here, I still think will work in terms of sewage, if I've got enough Yeah, if you got to clean out, to clean out. Plus this run, this run has to be in concrete. Once I enter topsoil, it's a cheaper project. It's just, it's just topsoil there. But anytime I'm under, the, the code is if you're under, con uh, under, Driveway, it's got to be in that concrete encasement if I'm at a certain height. Do we well, have a minimum depth in our yeah, sewer well, permit? That, if, if you're down four feet, well, you then it's fine. You're fine. Yeah, but I'm going to start this he, run he's saying 18 he inches down just to be sure I've got Since enough Since he doesn't edge, know this elevation. I don't know the depth. Aren't you much higher? Isn't that house much higher than the road? Yeah, but this area no, is that's flat. The, but that's the low side of the road. This is the basically. low side of the road. I mean, there's probably, oh, okay. you know, from here to here, a natural maybe foot. Or something like that, and it kind of well, slopes that way. But. Pop that manhole and have an idea. Uh, take yeah. a shot on that manhole. Yeah. You have fixtures in the basement. I mean, the other thing, um, no. The way this works okay. is our our garage is kind of accurate. Our basement is accurate. There's no fixtures down there. Okay. And this is sump pipe. One thing I can do too, guys. If if where does your sump? It'll cost me more money, but is I can dig here during this project and locate it and not do anything to it. I don't know what that does for me. Well, it tells you that what you're doing is going to work later. Yeah. But I guess if I'm already doing, doing it at the highest, the highest yeah. already, yeah. you know, yeah. what difference does it make? Because I'm going to be up against Look, I mean, it I, anyway. I, you know, I don't mind the proposal, you know, I, and, I, and I think if we do it under a situation like a sewer permit that's inspected and, and then there's a record of it that, yes, this piece was installed and, yes, uh, Anthony inspected it and we put it in the file. And then two years from the road, five, ten years around the road, he can use that piece to connect. I don't have a problem with it. I don't see how that would violate the developer's agreement because he's not connecting to the okay. sewer. Yeah. He's far yeah. away from it. So. Yeah. Oh, but we just, need whatever. We should have a draw. Yeah, well, you got <laughs> yeah. a draw. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is a really good survey, so it could be take yeah. guys off yeah. of the garage. Measure. He's going to need it. Yeah. He's going to need yeah, it. So that I know later on. I'm probably going to stub this pipe up, though. Yeah. And just let, so let it. See it. Yeah. So I can see it. It'll yeah. be flush with the grass or something. It'll just be capped. Okay. Uh, all right. So we understand what you want to do. Uh, you can take your survey. Uh, we haven't heard any uh, uh, regulatory entanglements that would prevent us from considering the request. Uh, do I have a motion? I will make a motion that he has the he is able to stub it straight across his driveway and then or run it straight across his driveway and stub it up in the grass. Yep. I would like to add that. Uh, when you guys say stub it up, you mean like a clean out? 
uh, just yeah. visible. Yeah, he yeah. wanted he was going to stub it up to right. It was just going to go like on a ninety. Yep. Sure. Okay. And and provide I would ask provide a drawing of it. You know, oh. as built. As right. built. With the uh, swing ties. Yeah, right? we'll take the building. We'll right. take images and everything as well because. I mean, it's ten years from now, I want everyone to be able to say that was done right. Yep. I mean, who should do this drawing? I'm comfortable um, with anyone. I'll the contractor do it yeah. if you'd like. Yeah. Yeah. And I can file it. Yep. There, there's enough quality information on the survey he has to yeah. be able to do that. As, long as, that, as long as the drawing, you know, uh, follows some reasonable. All right, so uh, and that it be inspected. We have a motion to yeah. allow the partial installation of a sewer lateral on uh, 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 your property. Um, ninety, that's right. Ninety camp. On uh, ninety camp, uh, not connected to the lateral in the street, uh, documented for the file and inspected under the terms of a of a of a sewer permit. Uh, and uh, no reason to charge the uh, connection fee at this time because of right. the connection based on the cost of connection reimbursement <laughs> at this time because there is no reimbursement necessary. Okay, <laughs> like an earworm. I, I second that. Second that. Any further discussion on the motion? Does it sound uh, right up your alley? Sounds great. Can I ask uh, just a side question? Yep. Um, is there any kind of sunset on the tap fees? Let's just say. The, the person uh, yeah. no longer is alive or whatever. No, like they their state just keeps going. No, no but I mean you get you get to pay this, that day's dollars sure. while That's they the paid in, right. you know. So we imagine on this developer's agreement there is no sunset clause, and that okay. any any uh, and so it would go to successors and assigns. I'm sure that language is in there somewhere. Yeah, this guy I know where he lives right now, but um, there there's other people that are. In Texas, and we find them. And yeah. One question I also had on that note is, since if he is, um, if you find him, um, is it allowable to negotiate a different cost? Do we have a do we have a copy of the agreement? For example, I can find a developer's agreement there, but um, that that's been tried before. No, like never. He, right now he gets zero. Or for right. five, and yeah. he said yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can get five today, or twenty, maybe never. Which or, one do you or want? Or never. You know? right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Better. If yeah. I was him, I might take that deal. You're a good thinker. It's good. Uh, well, I mean, at, at, at the very least, uh, it's a matter of public record. It's reasonable uh, to have to share a copy of the developer's agreement. Oh, And sure. then you can see the terms for yourself. Yeah, mine will share the developer's agreement with you, but. Um, the developer's agreement is an agreement between a developer and the town. Hmm. Nobody else, I don't think, is allowed to be a party to that. So it would require the town to agree with the developer. Yeah. Um, so basically, the, the, the developer's agreement would have to get revised, and then yes. you'd have to revise or, it equitably. Or, yeah. or there'd be a separate agreement between myself and the developer well, for be like form of reimbursement. Yeah. Could it well, be? well no, uh, why not? I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I hear what you're saying. You're saying he pays us 20. We pay the developer twenty, and the developer decides to give him fifteen. What do we know? Oh, right. We don't know. We don't care. About that. <laughs> <laughs> so far, I have no idea. Not that we're saying Great. you should do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Well, anyway, we'll give you a copy of the agreement. You can decide. Sure. Appreciate it, Don. Uh, oh yeah, so, yeah uh, so we've got a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Four zero. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thanks, sir. All right, so we've got a few things done, but we got a few things left to do. Oh boy! Uh, item number four: approve tentative sewer user fee rate pursuant to down, Town of Darien Code of Ordinance Appendix C, Administrative Regulations, Article 11, Sanitary Sewer Regulations, Section 1000-6.2. Discussion and action, and we'll do that kind of at the same time uh, with. Number five, well, number five is going to be an easy outset, uh, scheduling a public hearing uh, for September 3rd, Once 2019. Here, don't use those. Okay. Craig had me edit these. Oh, okay. 
because he was looking for something that hadn't been done yet, and I had to kind of put it in there for you. Okay. Sounds like you didn't make deadline of Friday. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? You didn't make the deadline of Friday. I was away on Thursday. <laughs> I saw your email going, yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> okay. Uh, what, it, what, it really did, what I really did change on here um, was the, uh, the reserve. Um, reserve. Jennifer has not taken the money out to cover the reserve, uh, to cover the excess from this year's budget that closed June 30th. So we hadn't closed the books yet, which means she didn't move money out of our reserve yet. So I had to physically do it on here so that you could see in the graph, the final page, yeah. um, what Craig had asked. It's not as bad as it looks in the, in the preview, but it's not good. Okay, no, I just, maybe last year I missed this, but this year, all right. So I have a question. Yes. So on, well, <clears throat> on the back there when you say reserve account, so all these accounts are funded with that amount of money, correct? That is correct. Okay. There's, if there's money in these, but like it says, sewer fund balance, and then sewer designated for capital equipment. Yes. So that's funded with seven hundred twenty-five, seven hundred twenty-seven thousand, et cetera. Yes. And so forth. Okay. And if you add up all those numbers, you see the bottom number is what we have. Okay. For this year, um, after I adjusted the very, very top number. You see, on your previous one, it was uh, two it was, high, it was higher. Yeah, and it just went down. So that's really what I changed so that the graph would be accurate. So okay. So some of this is. Um, but you also said in the notes that this does not include our I and I inspection. It does not. I have not put any money. I I haven't moved any money around for that yet. No. Okay. So. Um, what about what, you have any more questions? No, I just have a state. I, I have a okay, statement. Make a statement. So if you go back to the numbers here, which I'm assuming on the front page here, if you're saying if it was a 10.2 percent increase, then we still have to use 188 thousand dollars of money from the reserve from the sewer fund. Uh, what do we call it? The sewer reserve. Sewer fund balance. There, that that actual one. Yep. Okay. So just so everyone knows, for us to be absolutely even, would take a 16.22 percent increase. And that still wouldn't be even for two reasons. Well, <laughs> even with the, yeah, because the, I and I, the, I and I is normal revenue, the normal <clears throat> operate uh, expenses. Or normal operations. Yes, the I and I is not included, but I also have a statement about the I and I one, but I'll save that for when we get to that. Why don't you just say that? Okay, well, I have a question. Do do we think that it should be the I and I cost? Should it be um, pro rata, as in you know, if you use more water, you pay more of the study, or should everyone pay an equal amount for the study? Oh, well, I think. No. So you so what you do is you are, have are all of our user fees are based on the your use of the water, and uh, I have no desire to change that okay. at this time. Uh, I just wanted yeah. to put it out there and, and hear <laughs> people's response to it because yeah. I kind of was fifty fifty on it and figured people's responses would sway me one way or the other. Yeah, I mean your 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 thought is that we. We have the authority as the Water Pollution Control Authority in the town of Darien to, well, it's, it's a little different than that, right? Technically, the Board of Selectmen is the Water Pollution Control Authority in the town of Darien, and they bestow upon us the rights and privileges that uh, come with that. But in general, a Water Pollution Control Authority has the ability to, to have special assessments. So we could choose to have a special assessment of an extra $50 from each ratepayer this year if we so choose to cover the costs. Uh, so we have the ability to do that. Um, but I think that's a departure from something that we've always done. So I'm not interested in rocking the boat, I guess. And I still think there's a, a, uh, a, a, a an appropriate nexus between the amount of water that you're using and discharging the sewers 
and the amount you should pay for it, right? So I think there should always be the financial incentive to conserve where you can, right? Um, mm -hmm. Because that helps us in the long run with our fees to stay. So I like the, you know, kind of pay by the gallon. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if anyone else has opinions on it. No, I like to being consistent with what we've done. Um, any other thoughts or comments or questions? Uh, I know you, but I'm, not, I'm not saying you have to not ask any more of it. I want to. <laughs> oh no, I'm sure I'll have more. I, have, um, I can't help myself. They just come up. So, uh, this is basically a, a, a discussion of uh, we have each year, which is we have a lot of a fair amount of money in our uh, reserve fund, 3.7 million plus. Uh, and what costs does it make sense to take out of that versus not take out of that? Um, and that will get, I think, to the INI study. Does it make sense for the INI study to come out of that? Or should the INI study be covered as a anticipated expense for the next budget year by raising the rates? Um, Similarly, note one is a little scary. What's that? Note one is a little scary. Yes. Uh, because you know that that's not an insubstantial number potentially. Well, I and I went back and looked at that. Um, maybe I shouldn't have put not adjusted to address it, but maybe I should have said it doesn't look like it needs to be adjusted. Ah, okay. Um, That's better way to say it. <laughs> and, and I went back and looked at some of the, the numbers too, and, and I put in um, that uh, nitrogen credits, as well as I had um, the water usage for um, the lake and heather. Yeah. I had uh, Tamara and our seasonal Brendan pull that information. Yeah. And give me yearly accounts of what they had used. Yeah. Um, and then I turned around and. Um, Doubled it. Okay. For Just to see what happens. see what happens. And it yeah. wasn't close to what Stanford had used to figure what our payments were going to be at sixteen point six seven percent. It actually okay. dropped it down to to fourteen point nine. They were they're they're thinking okay. Yeah. So it, their their increase the the number that they threw out of this last year that so we you should pay monthly. Was you think that monthly. that two point seven will cover us next year? I, I think it's pretty close. Yeah. Okay. I, as best as as yeah. best I can put out. Before we have the actual hard data. Oh, okay, the 2.700,000, two two yeah, all right. Yeah. Uh, question I had on that, I think I put in the email was, are the um, kind of bonus nitrogen credits that Stanford got this year reflected as our share of those nitrogen credits in here anywhere? They are in the calculation I did to check what their expectation for a payment for next year? Okay, so they're that they they are kind of baked into that two point seven. Yes. Okay. Um, roughly speaking. Okay. So okay. So that's your that's your based on all the information you have. That's your best guess at what we're going to have to pay. And then roll in the abnormal rain that we had this year. So everything was elevated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I had you know, I I walked I walked it back a little bit off the edge. Yeah. Uh. Okay, that's helpful. So these are these are solid numbers on which to base a budget. Um, so the one thing that's not in here are the a in the near term soft costs paid to a consultant to investigate II in the system, and two whatever um, construction costs that are recommended by the oh, okay. by the study. But is that going to be in the next year? No, nah, you know, I mean, I think you know if they, if we find something. That's a red flag, and we need to go quickly address. We'll go quickly address it, um, but that might be a reserve fund thing, you know. I um, feel real comfortable using yeah, reserve fund for, for, for like, hey, well, we got to deal that. Some you know, low hanging yeah. fruit there. Versus that, like a long term, be. like okay, here you got a line five miles of pipe, and the other day. Um, I, I, it was recommended or suggested yep. um, by a, a, a few that we may want to do the study and use reserve to do that. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with that either. Construction work, if you will. I don't disagree with that either. Depending on the scope. Well, you know, yeah. there, you know, you're talking to three million dollars worth of construction, possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's 
spread over a 10-year period will not impact your rates. Yeah, we've got good, we can borrow cheaply right now. Everybody We're talking about your, your user fees. Yep. Yep. yep, yeah, and then we could have a single digit increase over a period of time instead of all of a sudden having yeah. a spike. And, and theoretically that work should have a return on investment in that we're reducing the amount of water that's going to Stanford and reducing our payments to Stanford. So, so I, I, I think bonding kind of makes sense to level that curve. Kind of gives us a little yeah. bit of a, a chance to see what the effects are yeah. and at the same yeah. time walk us up if we need to slowly with the rate and not, as you're looking at right now, okay. Jump. So usually what we do here is we, we know we're going to have a public hearing uh, because we uh, know we are, are likely to entertain a rate increase uh, and so that needs to occur at a, public, a duly noticed public hearing. Uh, what we uh, tend to do is to kind of put a, uh, uh, yeah, the sewer commission is considering a rate increase, you know, up to blah. Uh, uh, and we can hone in on, on what our comfort level is for the top line now. Uh, oh, we're supposed to kind of pick a target? Tentative. Tentative, yeah. Up to. Yeah, you're supposed to choose a tentative rate. Yeah, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go higher than whatever we publish. I would go lower than whatever we publish. <laughs> you know, so, uh, that would, yeah, yeah, you can go, like you just said, you can go, it's 10, and we could make it 10, and they'll discuss it, and they'll turn it up to be 5. Yeah, or exactly. Or whatever. I think you did, that, you did that last time. I think yep. you, you, you discussed I think the range. We did. We had a range. We did. We said that, or we set up to, or so, yeah, we said 0 to 6, and we ended up 3 or something like that. I don't know. Uh, the, uh, so in the past, I have been more vociferous about making uh, no or minor adjustments in our uh, in our user fees. Uh, we had a very good track record for a very long time. These things do fluctuate from year to year based on Aquarian records and costs. So, um, and I've also said in the past that 3.7 seemed like um, too much money to be sitting in an account. Uh, um, just, uh, you know, it was almost our entire operating budget for the year uh, sitting in the account. Uh, so I didn't have a problem using some of that uh, to avoid significant rate increases, but these numbers are a little more stark than years past. And notice the water use did go down. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm going to attribute some of that to maybe the change. The November to March yeah. change. Yeah, March. yeah, three percent is yeah. right in what I would think <clears throat> the lowest quarters to yeah. five months. So well, look, I, 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 self -balancing act right now. I would be, I think we have to go to at least six dollars per hundred cubic feet. Uh, uh, I, I think that's kind of the low side in terms of uh, my thinking. Uh, I'd love to be convinced not to go higher than that. But that would take $300,000 out of the reserve, theoretically. Although our collections tend to be better than your projections. They, they have been yep. over the last couple of years. Yep. And this, like, this is just a guide. The numbers, that yep. they, they do fluctuate. Yep, exactly. This is. As precise as they may look in front of you. It's, be it's, it's beautiful being an engineer because, you know, everybody thinks it's precise. All right, well, <laughs> just, just to put it in perspective. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, our average residential user uses 89 CCFs a year. Okay. And if we were to raise it 6.19%, yep. it's $31.13. Okay. To an average user. To an average user. Yep. I mean, look, I think these, whenever I get my bill, I'm like, that's a lot of money. Uh, but there is a lot of value in that money. Um, so then we could divide that by 365, and it's <laughs> it's a, you know minimal, a dime a day. So I, I don't have any problem. I, I would say just for giggles, we need to say uh, you know eight percent just for the public announcement. Okay, so you're saying 
well, I would, I, if, if we say 8%, I'm not going above 8%. No, and, I, and, I, and, I, agree, and okay. I, I would agree with your yeah, sentiment there yeah, that you're yeah. not going to go above Whatever the advertised yeah, price yeah, yeah. or the advertised increase, sorry. Yeah. Um, but you do, you just want to have some buffer to yeah. that price. Yep. Yeah. For, another month, for an, or, another month worth of knowledge. Yes. Uh, so, any other comment before we ask Bob if that's a motion? <laughs> So we have a motion from Bob to schedule a public hearing for September 3rd on a tentative sewer user fee rate uh, increase of up to 8%. Yes. Okay. Is that a second? Right Peter seconds. Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Any Aye. further discussion on the balances or the accounting that uh, that is done. No, I mean, it's okay. Yeah, we can cover some of this under superintendent's report. It's Maybe hard to gauge. Uh, all right, so that is four and five dispensed with. Uh, okay. You good with that, gentlemen? Uh, number eight. eight. You voted on that together? Is that the thing? Oh, I didn't well, vote. You're going to have to all, all those. Meet. You voted yeah, we're, public hearing, and you voted that the rate would be eight percent. Yes. Advertised. Yes. yes. All those in favor, say aye. If I didn't aye. do that before. Yes. Okay, it's four zero. <laughs> uh, number eight, ninety-eight Homes Avenue subdivision billing procedure discussion and action. Uh, number eight. The commission has gone through something similar. that somebody's not here. The way this was explained to me, uh, there are two properties on one lot and they have one water meter. Mm -hmm. And now the property's been subdivided. I don't even know how that happened without us being asked. But um, a couple of questions come to mind immediately that we think warrants your attention. One, how do we build them? Um, if there's one water meter, should the house that's getting the water be billed and now that there are two separate parcels certainly the second parcel would at least get a minimum bill because they're they are a separate parcel connected to a server and anybody connected to the server gets a minimum bill uh, are they owned by the same as person? as much as i agree with that we don't do that for pemberton 16 which boils my ass so how do we do it for them well, it's a separate lot yes yeah, separate lot separate I get it, structure but basically what it is is it's a separate but we have to look. a separate building. And until they subdivided it, we did it just like that. I, I, I don't happy, disagree yeah. that there's a conversation to have about multifamily attached housing with one meter versus separate detached single family housing with separate connections and separate meters. And I don't 16 only has one water meter? Yes. Yeah. Really? Yep. So I don't. But it's not, it's not your normal size. A normal one in a house is five eighths. They probably have a two inch. Well, so in terms of is that the, usual? Yeah. Oh. Okay. So for for a building <laughs> for a single building yeah. with multiple tenants, usually it is one water meter oh, coming okay. to the building. All right. And it's up to the landlord to decide if he wants to sub meter out the I get it. utility okay. building. Okay. Okay. As long as it's and usual. so we end up <laughs> charging based on the flow going into that building. Right. We send it to the one person these that owns the building and say, the buildings, hey, right. Yep. So because we don't want to get involved necessarily in person. well what happens when it's kind of an association and they're owned by multiple the people person. you send the bill well, again to they probably they have the water, in though? their condominium be, documents how to pay for common expenses probably well, yes. what, why wouldn't we just uh, but that's up I to mean, them what, someone from that property really has to pay our bill do we want to get yeah. a minimum charge plus the water deal so how many dollars is that? Two nineteen fifty five. So we're we're talking about two hundred and nineteen dollars and fifty five cents. Yeah, that's the way you guys want to bill it. And the oh, second oh, issue. Hold on, I still don't have my head around this. So do okay. we have so they subdivided the lot. I got but it. They still only have one water main. I got one it. One oh. Cut that too. Because so they now have one how do we how do you how do you assess the sewer usage fee to the second property? I got that too. 
when be, and this only works because both properties are owned by the same person. Do are they? I mean, we have, no, we have, I think we have to assume that they wouldn't be. They're two separate properties. Well, no, these are. Well, if they say they are right now. Well, currently, but I think we have to make the assumption that they're not in terms of how we bill people. Right. I'm talking about yeah. what the, the facts of the case versus down the road. And I is this in existence in other places where people have one water main coming in from multiple houses? That sounds unusual. I, I mean, think what, it is too. I don't, I don't know how the Aquarian approved it, this. It, it, I mean, they, they Well, but the Aquarian doesn't, they, they don't they care don't. because there isn't a, why should they care as long as someone pays it? Well, that's, ours, the, pro that's the problem. The, ours, what if the guy in the front house doesn't pay his water bill, water gets shut off, and the guy in the back said, what are you showing my water off for? Right. Yeah, I, I yeah, that that could be a problem. So but that's why Aquarian has a policy. We, we one can't service shut off our water main. <laughs> but but the thing is, if say they're just for giggles, the front house uses a hundred, and then you still um, charge the back one a minimum. So the hundreds charge five sixty five yeah. five sixty five yeah. even, and then you have two nineteen fifty five. So you're actually collecting more. A mess. for the property than the gallonage. So in essence, Which is what in essence, charged. and someone would, if you were here, I believe you would say, we're making money. Mm -hmm. But um, okay, we're maintaining a very expensive I agree with you. bit of infrastructure. I mean, if you agree with you, but. Oh, <laughs> don't <fall. laughs> break I mean, if, let, let's just say, for example, if um, somebody were to purchase that other property. Yeah. That's we have, not we, I, think we should, I think we should assume right? that. If you assume that, then um, I would think that the attorney who was handling that would, um, I mean, first of all, he mess. would have to, he would have to, um, uh, go to the water company and say, well, um, you know, you're connected to the water, right? Why charge the back so, guy the minimum, so what, not charge the back guy the average? Because we don't no, know how much no, water he's no, using. Wait, 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 wait. I mean, if, if you go, I mean, if you're, if you're an attorney and you're closing, and you say, well, you know, what's the water bill? Well, you know, there, there is no charge by the water company. No attorney who doesn't want to get sued is going to let it stay that way. In other words, the attorney's going to have to say, well, wait a minute, you know, here's the problem, Mr. Prospective Owner. I mean, if he doesn't pay the water bill, what's going to happen to you? So, something that's going to have to be written about that, or someone's going to have to say to Aquarian, We'd like you to put in a meter. Go on. Yeah. Well, that's. I mean. But I mean, yeah. But, but to, to put it, to put it, to put in a meter, they have to. They would put it. They're not going to like sub meter on a property. They're going to say we need two service connections with a curb box at the street, and that's going right. into each that's right. building. You know, that's right. Thousands and thousands of dollars. Well, uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, as long as it's owned by those two properties, are owned but, by one person. Yeah. But somehow, every, this has been allowed and it exists, and now we have to send a sewer bill. So, so and they're subdivided. We, Whether or not it, we, don't the, we don't have the handle. Oh, they're subdivided. So tomorrow, tomorrow he can sell it. Well, well, so this is this, but this is what I'm saying. The minimum charge is when there is documented proof that someone uses less water than what would be generated by that minimum charge, and, and we set a floor and say, well, no, everybody's got to contribute here because it's an important asset, and your property is benefiting from it. Um, in this case, to me, it's exactly like a well charge where you have a, a house on a well that's discharging you know, into the sewer and we don't have a meter on the well. I think it's an average charge. Because we don't know how much water they're using. Why would we send them a minimum? And then if it's too much money for them over time, then they can figure out how to solve it. And the solution well, is to well, wait separately a minute. See, meter Because I look at the it. minimum charge different than you do. I look at, the, well, <laughs> because I look at the minimum charge as the minimum charge is your contribution to the to the upkeep of the system. Yes. And you're because we're, we're getting and you're given thirty eight point five five CCFs out of the goodness of our heart. Yeah. 
So you're saying that we're going to get the money for the actual usage from the meter. And then the, ba the back house, or the new, has the back least, house is paying $219.55 okay. for upkeep of the system. All right, so I could, I could buy into that logic, I guess. I don't like it. I mean, I don't like Not, the situation. Yeah, well, I don't the like situation. the situation. But <laughs> I, I just think if you're doing the 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 well, and I and I understand Should your we, so logic, you're just gonna yeah, the total it. of the two is gonna be uh, quite not, not equitable. Not equitable. Well, yes. I mean, if, if if there's a rentor in the back, if that's, in both. If that's yeah, the yeah. case, yeah. right, then the. Owner I of see, the property see may be uh, sub billing like to him, but we don't we don't have any knowledge of that, and we don't care. I guess we don't care. All right, all right. So I, I, I guess I have my hand around it. Do we want to decide on this tonight, or do we want to uh, require the uh, yes, sir? I would just I would just call your attention to page six or seven. Tamara was nice enough to include um, the meeting minutes of a similar. Situation that the commission is okay. I don't have page six. Of, uh, I do have page six. Of it says page six. Yeah, eight for the circle. Uh, your last form, and they connected to the sewer and have been found that the existing house has a water meter and the new house does not. So both houses are being served off of one water meter, so there's no water space. So the director's is tapped for the first time. So, okay. Do I have that? So that would be a consistent finding, is what you're trying to say. To what Bob said, Bob's yeah. yeah. Is a consistent finding. Is that a motion, Bob? Uh, yes, I'll make the motion that uh, the newly formed property receives a minimum bill. Is there a second on the motion? I'll no. second that. Peter, okay. Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. That took me a while, 4-0. Sorry. And, uh, and the other one, the other guy gets billed on whatever. Yes. 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 So the total is going to be. No change in how the other home gets built. <clears throat> and it's consistent. And I and I get it. Uh, it's consistent, and I. And I get Upkeep it. of the it took system. Took me a second. Yeah. I mean, right. I, I understood your argument. I just thought it took it a little too far. I hear you. And good. I, I, that's usually not. We got to a good solution. For some reason, the, the tables are turned. Usually, it's. <laughs> uh, item number nine: twenty thousand nineteen user fee mailing with brochure. Mm -hmm. This is discussion. Yeah, that's one of This is the same as last year? Sorry, what's that? Same as last year? Yes. Yeah, all the stuff that you guys asked about is in there. Yeah. It's um, um, wet wipes and bump on grease, etc. This is a, uh, a way to continue our public information and education for um, the folks that believe we should do more of that. And, and I agree. My <clears throat> It's good. I think it's good information to have out there. Oh, no, I thought on it was, a consistent I thought it was basis. great. How are the people with that sell the wipes and say they're biodegradable and no problems with your septic system allowed to say that when that's just there's actually not a class action suit against, against them. <laughs> good. <laughs> do, do they actually say biodegradable or do they say flushable? Flushable, right? Because that's the difference. Yeah. They well, can, see, I can yeah. take my they can sock get, off. They can and get my through sock the toilet. Flushable. Yeah. yeah. No, it yeah. doesn't say flushable. It says uh, I know the one. Well, some say septic. septic oh, do they? Okay. Or whatever, the but preparation mm -hmm. H works. The, the folks works. that are being sued in class action H. suit, they say flushable. And so people say, oh, I can flush down the toilet. It doesn't mean that whatever is receiving that yeah. flushed item is going to not have negative impacts because of it. They, they go down the, the collection system and they kind of ball up and catch on. Oh, I, I like, can understand how that would be. I'm, I was just sort of asking. You see that, and it says absolutely. That it's, it's, a, it's a problem. It's safe. Okay. No, like so. So I was asking if. There's yeah, like New, New York City. I mean, every uh, sewer system has a problem with balling and coagulating wet wipes. We had a problem mm -hmm. in many of our pump stations with them clogging the impellers and the impellers getting stuck. Mm -hmm. We went through a program of replacing the impellers in a lot of the critical pump stations. So chops them up now and doesn't cause that problem anymore. Um, but it's a huge issue for all sewer systems and not only in pump stations, but you can have coagulated, hmm. add the grease to the wet pipes. It's like really like turns into this 
and you, there's wonderful stories that you'll notice now that you sit on the sewer commission where like a fatberg develops in a <laughs> gigantic city sewer system mm -hmm. where they have to like they? literally i mean the, the latest one like london they're like the biggest in london oh, yeah. like like we're talking really? like like 100 tons yeah. in these you know 10 foot sewers these Fatbergs, yeah. and they have to send people down there for six weeks to break them apart and, and get them out of the sewer. Cheapers. So they clog yeah. mains, yeah. they are bad for pumps. Wet wipes are a scourge wow. on sewer systems, 100%. So, uh, you know, people with wherewithal that have a huge sewer system to maintain and are spending millions of dollars pulling these wet wipes out of systems, like New York City, have sued the manufacturers of these wet wipes. Um, well, at least they're after the people who come up with their advertising. <laughs> yes. Well, it's, yeah. Um, okay. Anyway, so All there's right. a interesting, minor diversion interesting on news. wet wipe yeah. education. Well, and it's good <clears throat> because the public is watching this and they should be hearing yes. this. Not just those people who are maybe going to read there the There are people do watch Channel 79. God bless them. They do. <laughs> Like so no comments on yeah, the brochure, no, no, and we'd like great. to put it in. My comment yes. is it's yeah. great. Do it. <laughs> I like it's worth the expense of putting sure it in. Thought, all right, make a motion. Uh, all those in favor? All right. Uh, night 10, 17 for 8 court. Uh, do we have to discuss this right now? Is there anything new? I have attachments. Oh. Okay. We have not responded. We have not heard a response. I wrote a letter to let the resident know. So just that updating. There's a sewer next door that she will need an easement. Then I found out her attorney had spoken to Anthony, so I sent the attorney an email. I have not heard back from him. That was uh, July 12th. Okay. okay. Thank you for that. Take a step back. Did you vote on the? We did. We did. So we're going to table that one. Are we? I didn't hear a second. We're going to table number ten. <laughs> yeah, we're tabling free court. Yeah. 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 Uh, should we table 11 or? That's 11. Well, no, are we oh, there's actually a letter. letter? Okay. No, there's a letter in here. We're approving his letter that okay, he asked, you asked him to redraft. I'm yes, sorry. Thank you. And I have one. Um, I have a. I have one correction in the third to the last paragraph. Um, towards the end, it's these. I think it's probably supposed to be these costs cannot be instead of these costs. Third to last? Start, the paragraph starts in addition to the benefit appraisal and then yeah. go down towards the. Oh, okay, that one. All right. All right. It should either be the, this cost or these costs. These costs. It should be with an S. Right. Or the cost. It's not clear to me who pays for the appraisal. Sorry? That? Who pays for this appraisal? The benefit cost appraisal. The, the, the sewer, sewer commission. commission. Yeah. Do we recoup that? No. Um, if the project goes forward, if the project goes forward, goes into the assessment. if it doesn't it go forward, the we don't. Cost. Okay. If the project doesn't go yeah. forward, you need it. I think yep. the letter's great. Really? Okay. Yep. So, okay. Um, do you want me to send this? Uh, do we have a motion to? Uh, I will make a motion to send All right. This I'll second. second. Uh, and all those in favor? Uh, okay. Uh, oh, 10, okay. 10, 11. Superintendent's report. Keep it, keep it, let's keep it on the agenda that. and we want to get it done. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. There. And just yeah. the penalties you were talking are monetary? Yes. Okay. Um, the CD pump station, we're, we're still in a, a holding pattern waiting for the easement sign off, but um, we are working to get that generator installed. Um, we have made some progress with Eversource with regards to the location of the new line coming in so that we could install our systems and not have to either relocate them or um, make adjustments to their resources plan. Okay. You see? Yeah. Um, we installed the power, the meter box, and um, 
Right now, Heather Lane is good to go. We have power there and we have a meter. We just ran into a problem recently trying to get the meter installed on Lake. Um, we were informed that the meter box is lower than they like. Um, we have a couple of bollards in front of the box, which we didn't put there. They were there to protect the box from, I suppose, vehicular strikes. Um, but apparently they don't like that either. They, it's within three feet of the box. We have a meeting scheduled for nine o'clock tomorrow morning with Eversource, with our electrician. We invited the building inspector who has no problem with the installation whatsoever. He's already signed off on it um, to see if we can rectify what's going on. As soon as that's done, the meter's plugged in, we have power, then um, we'll install the mission thing and NAP is waiting. The meter company is waiting to come and install the meter as soon as we call it. It's amazing how long this takes. <laughs> You know, it should have been done yesterday. <laughs> why? Be careful with the TV. I don't know why they pull the wire. Why they pull the wire? So if the meter was too low, why don't you tell us? We would raise the meter. Oh, oh. So we were. We got a sign off from the building inspector. We had a licensed electrician install it. Um, we had Eversource come and pull the wire. And then we were informed, eh, we can't put the meter. <clears throat> so hopefully we can put that to bed tomorrow or at least have some clear direction on what we have to do to correct it and get back on track quickly. It's our plan. Okay, thank you. Obviously that's important to kind of finalizing our relationship with Stanford. <clears throat> yep. Segway. The contract is and signed by the Ooh. chairman. And there was much rejoicing. <laughs> and uh, I sent copies to Stanford, just waiting to get the copies back from them. And technically, it's only good for four years from now, right? Because the five year <laughs> extension started last July. Yeah. First. Maybe we should start negotiating now. I, I I, we probably should. I got to do this all over again <laughs> in four years. Yeah. Start now. Yeah. Theoretically, the, the, the agreement should be, you know, better every time we do it. And the process should go easier, too. Yeah, because Heather Lane and uh, Lake there aren't going to be an issue. All right, so uh, Sorry. 13 uh, near Water Lane pump station property and building conditions. Any update? The building, we, we cleaned up some of the building, but we did go down and take samples of the water out, and we had them taken to the Stanford. Okay. For testing. Okay. Um, some broad testing. Um, we did weld all of, every single one of those covers that was completed this morning. Okay. Um, so they cannot be accessed. Except okay. for I think two separate ones were set up to we have a, we have a bar going across it and locks on in case we need to get into it. Okay. So they cannot be accessed. Set. Okay. Any further concerns? Or? Um did you by chance happen to move that bucket that was on the tank? I forgot to mention it last meeting. I did not. Okay. Underneath that bucket, there's about a coffee can size hole, which I was told was created when someone stomped on the concrete. Okay. First I'm hearing about it. I will look into it. It does look like the concrete is reinforced, though. No, but that was what we were told, correct? It yes. He stomped on it and that yeah. it created. So I'm, and I, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention it at the meeting. I thought of it after. Um, but just bringing that up. Okay. Repair hole. Right. We'll look into see why it uh, to begin with it. That's patch hole. Kind of, yeah, okay. It wasn't You'll a question of patch. I mean, you might need to try and inspect it from the underside to see the Whatever. condition of the surrounding. Concrete. Yes. Okay. So. It was somewhere right in the middle. There was like a, I want to say there was a bucket. Wasn't that what was on it? A bucket. There was there was a bucket. He did mention something about, but I, I looked at it and it did look like where the concrete had crumbled away. There was, there was some metal re, yeah, some kind of metal reinforcement that you saw, in the concrete, mm -hmm. which gave me a, sense that it was, not when the whole thing wasn't going to fall in. Reinforced concrete. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you have to have reinforcement. Con concrete. It's just going to crumble away. Well, but the, 
reinforced concrete is the, the way it works is concrete has a has a good compression strength. Mm -hmm. Steel has a good tensile strength. So the combination makes you able to make slabs which you can walk across. Right? Right. I guess that? my sense was that it wasn't gonna all cave in because right. metal would still right. yes. be holding stuff people up. True true. But you can hold on to it. Would that be a good description of um, <laughs> steel reinforced yes, concrete? I remember that class. <laughs> concrete. Concrete. Did a lot of those calculations, but I don't use any more. <laughs> uh, uh, any new business? Hearing none, we'll move to item number 15. <laughs> did you mind that? Uh, yeah, yes. did I mind that? Yeah. Uh, uh, let the secretary go, Mr. Chairman. Yes, so uh, we're going to take a vote to go into executive session. Uh, once we go into executive session, uh, 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 obviously it's closed doors. Uh, we can let our, uh, our uh, reporter go home uh, because uh, we will not entertain any new business after executive, just, uh, executive session except for the adjournment. So, motion to go into executive session. Right here. Second. Thank you. All those in favor. We are now in executive session.